here. <laughs> All right, guys. So, so again, this is what we're going to try to to do. All right, and let me open the, the other file right here. So for right now, all right, we're going to try to uh, create this forms right here. So this is where we left off. Okay. So now what we need to do right, is we're going to turn this curves right, into extrusions, right, which are a solid. Right now. Um, so how do we do that? Extrude. Right. Now there's different types of extrusions. In this case, what we want to use is extrude the curves. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. Select curves to extrude. Right, I can select them all at the same time. Double check. Right, so I'll do a distance. Right, I measure from that end to that end. Now, notice this is actually really good because what did it tell me as my distance? Zero. Right? Is that possible? Well, it kind of is, right? But uh, but it's not, right? I mean, we know visually it's not. All right, so it actually has to do with our units right here, all right? And uh, you know we get confused a lot about this, but this distance display right here, this is not a scale, okay? This is actually the uh, precision that you want your measurements. Now, what is this set up to right now? One eighth. One eighth, right? So it's not going to give us anything that's smaller of one eighth, okay? So in this case, right, we're working with really tiny things, right? Notice that notice that even we can go up to a one twenty eight. All right, so there's the 116 right there. Okay. Uh, now, now if I try it, right, distance, right, distance one more time, right, and it, it measures, right, that's 116. It should be 116, right? But again, remember, we're working very, very um, tiny objects, I guess, relatively to what you can actually build right here. Um, so we have created those. Now we want to change right each of these surfaces right to one of its uh, layers either. So um, uh, can I do it right here? Change object layer. Can I do that? Right there. there we go. All right, so I can select an object right here. I go to this layer right here. Uh, change object layer. All right, select this object right here. Whenever you get this thing right here, the selection menu. All right, Rhino is telling you it's like, hey, well, wherever you're clicking. Right? I'm confused. I mean, there there is more than one things that could actually be selected with that click. Okay, so you can use your use your your arrows on your keyboard to select which one you want. In this case, and and become familiar, start becoming familiar with the terminology. Right? I mean, what's a curve and what's an extrusion? Right? Bless you. Or you're gonna get poly surfaces, right? Etc. Right? So in this case, we actually want to select the extrusion. Right. So I select that right there. I can go to S3 right there. Uh, change object layer. Okay. Notice that right now I'm doing a ghosted view. Right now that's going to become helpful, but I'm going to go to shade it right now. Okay. Remember, those are your view styles right here. Right. Wireframe uh, allows me to see it in, in this way. Right. Just the lines. Right. Um, shade it. And later on, you know, we'll, we'll try the render right there that takes, uh, you know, uh, the colors away because from there it works on materials, right? And then ghosted, which is the one that we'll be using right now. Okay, we'll go to shade it. All right, so we have that. I'm going to go back to my top view right here. Um, and, and again, maybe before I go on, right, if, if again, you got a little bit behind in creating these forms, right, I mean, remember, I, I, right, I use the command circle, right, uh, I, I'm using grid snap on so that I can have some sort of control with whatever I'm applying right here. So I pick a center and I choose an intersection of the grid at my center. Again, this is just for uh, try to keep things neat and organized. Uh, again, I can set that up by a diameter or a radius, right? It doesn't matter, right? In this case, just as long as you know that diameter would be one inch or the radius is half an inch, right? Whichever one works, okay? So 5.5, .5, sorry, right? And I have that circle right there. I can type copy, right? Enter, select that object. Notice as well that I'm using right click, okay? Right click repeats the last command that I used, right? And I can snap from the center. Right? And always, right, whenever I'm talking about snap or you want to snap to something, wait for the little um, 
word to come up right there, right? So right there, that's either an end or a quadrant, but if I move my cursor around it, that's actually the center, okay? Or if I come on this end right here, that's the quadrant, okay? So um, that's going to become helpful right now because I'm going to type polygon, right? Enter. Now, again, I can set the number of sides from the get-go, which probably should be the best uh, idea, right? Uh, and then again, place my cursor. Hey, it's, I, I'm, I, I could snap to center, right? And I know that because it's a white. Uh, there's a little white line right there, which is your smart tracking guiding you, all right? So I already snapped to the center right now. I move my cursor out, and again, I have grid snap on, and it's snapping to all those points right there. But the one that I want, right, is that quadrant right there, okay? So I snap to that. I right-click to repeat the command. Now, as I mentioned, probably you should set up the number of sites right away, but I can actually set up the center, and as I do that, I can still go back and select the number. I don't have to cancel, right? That would be the, you know, that, that kind of becomes slow because you start a command, you cancel, and then you start it again. Uh, you can actually do it as you're on it. Now, notice as well that as you become faster on this, you want to use the keyboard as much as you can, right? So you're going to see these letters, these words, but some letters are underscored, right? That means that I can actually use the letter N, enter, and I go into that option right there without having to click on it, okay? So I really recommend that you start keeping an eye on this and that you uh, become agile at adding this. So we're at the four-sided one. Enter, right? Right-click, center point. Oops, again. Correct. All right. So there's actually right there two options. I can either type the letter M or I can type the letter M as in Michael. Right, so if I type the letter M, right, there's the option right there. Oops. Right, I changed it. Right, it goes now into uh, circumscribe right there. All right, or if I type M again, right, it goes into inscribe, which is actually what it want. Okay. So again, I'm done with that. Now that should be a what polygon? A pentagon. A pentagon. Right, which has how many sites? Five. All right. So I click on the center right there, except that I need to press N for number of sides, right? Number of sides, five, enter. Okay. And I create that right there. Again, I can select multiple things very easily if I just hold my, my shift key. All right. Correct. Uh, again, I can, there's many ways that I can change an object's layer. All right. I can go into this, this uh, bottom um, bar right here and change it from here. Or I can go right into the layer, which I can I understand that could be the graphically or visually that could be a most uh, you know a simpler way of doing it. Right click right here, uh, change object layer, and it will change it to whichever layer you're selected right there. Okay, so that was just going back to how we started this. All right, after that, remember we copied it up, up up here. Now, what are these three forms right here? What do they represent? Your surfaces. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm going to um, bring, all right, I'm going to copy, all right, see again, one of your, again, one of your enters, right? I can do a right click, enter, or spacebar, but unfortunately for this software that I'm using to record the screen, spacebar also means or start the recording. Right, so that's why you're gonna hear me like, man, because I'm very used to uh, using spacebar, but I can't use it right now because I'm gonna pause the recording. And what happens is that I record, and okay, guys, do it, and then I'm gonna upload the video, and I already recorded like three minutes because I paused it and I forgot, and I had it. Yeah, it's really a bummer. Okay. Oh, hey, that's on the record. Okay, so copy that. I uh, bring it right here. Now, how many uh, solids do we have? Huh? Okay, how many times? Five. No, that's correct. So I'm going to have, um, whoops, five of this. Hi, baby. So I'm gonna, I want to have five of these uh, objects right here. Okay, so I'm going to type copy, right? Enter, and I'm just gonna copy this right here and that right there okay now this five uh, circles with the inscribed uh, polygons are going to be the guide in order for me to incorporate these polyhedrons okay this is exactly how we worked on it on on the on the 
triangle? Correct, right? Thank you, Karina. That is correct, right? Now, that's exactly what I want to show you guys right here, right? That, okay, so yes, right? The tetrahedron is made out of a triangle or triangles, cube out of squares. Now, the, what's okay, this guy yeah. called? Octahedron, right there, right? What is that one made out of? Triangle. Triangles, right? So that means that you, Pentagon, thank you, but right, I can type copy. Yes, thank you, next. Tetrahedron, you're in, right? So I copy and snap from that. Bring it right there. Okay, so the next is the uh, dodecahedron, right? That one's made out of? Pentagons, right? So is that one right? Yeah, right. And last but not least, uh, kinda eco. Yeah, eco. Yeah, yeah. Like ecological or whatever. So it's. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that right here, but okay. So we still delete that, and again, I can type copy. All right, so really good observation that uh, Karina made that. Again, and that's the reason why we only have these three surfaces right here because those are the only ones that we use, right, in order to make these polyhedrons. Okay, so right there, for example, it's snapping to not the right object. Right there, it's snapping to the center. Okay, so again, these are a guide. Now we're ready to incorporate our polyhedrons. Now there's a whole mathematical way of building actually your eco uh, your polyhedrons right uh, there's an angle right as you can see of this form strike how it is bends but uh thankfully there's this plugin that can help us with that okay so this is now where again hopefully you were able to install the plugin it's very simple just double click on it follow like two three steps that are right there if you have questions just let me know but right now if you do things correctly as you type poly Right, one of them should be polyline, but as you keep going through them, you should see a polyhedron option. Now, this is not built within Rhino. Right? I mean, this is not originally part of it. Think about it as an app. Right? I mean, you buy on your phone and you have to download um, the YouTube app or whatever, right, or the Chrome app. Right? So it's kind of that way. Now, this is an incredible source that you guys have right here. All right? So as you open this, right, if I could borrow your attention, it's uh, very, very neat. Now, this is uh, polyhedrons in general. I mean, and they're divided by categories. So even that one right there. All right? So you can go through them. gives you the number of vertices and faces. And there's some pretty awesome stuff right there. All right? Uh, from prisms to to you know you name it some of them that I have never heard in my life right such as the augmented truncated dodecahedron right <laughs> right uh, faces 42 uh, that's, uh, right. but right. there you go All right but so these are the categories right here right chamfer solids Catalan surface uh, solids um, Icosahedra, all right. Prisms, prisms are, are going to be uh, um, prism anti prism, sorry, but uh, prisms. Okay, but right above it is platonic solids. Okay, there's a full category just on the platonic solids. Okay, so I find it, all right, platonic solids, and we have our how many platonic solids? We have five. Five, all right. So there they are. Now, I'm going to start each uh, go uh, by them, okay? So, tetrahedron, I click OK. Now, it's specifying the center of the tetrahedron, okay? So, I'm going to select the circle right there uh, as the tetrahedron right there. Let me go into uh, my shaded view because it's shaded right there. Uh, now, scale or reference point, right? Now, output, make sure that it's to surface. And colorize, actually set it to no. Uh, I'll explain later on what colorize does. Um, but uh, it, it, uh, it, it would not follow the layers that we're working on. Okay. So the scale factor is waiting for me to do a click. Now, the only thing, I mean, it's an incredible source that we have right here, the plugin. The only thing that I would maybe, you know, look into right, is uh, more options in terms of how you insert these polyhedrons because, again, 
how it uh, inserts it. Um, well, I'm not really sure how, right? What what are the the parameters? But uh, it doesn't. It's not sitting on a flat surface. Let's put it that way. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to take care of that. Okay. But um, let me go ahead and uh, right click and bring uh, you know some of these ones right here, the cube. You know, and I can bring it anywhere. Right. Notice though how and let me get rid of maybe uh, grid's not right here. You know, bring that guy right there. Right click, uh, and then from there is that octahedron right there. Do a click, I bring that guy right here. Uh, right click, um, go decahedron, bring that guy right there. And right click, ecosahedron, bring that guy right here. Okay, now as I, I, I repeat, right, if you look at these objects right here, they're not sitting on a flat surface. They look pretty and interesting. However, uh, challenging for us in order to uh, build your models, okay? So, um, I'm going to teach you a few things right here. Uh, the first one is rotate, just simple rotation. The second one is scale, uh, three-dimensional scaling. And the last one, it's a really cool command and it's very, very helpful, and it's called orient three points, okay? Orient three points. Okay, which you're gonna use a lot for this assignment. Okay, so here we go. So I'm just going to I'm going to move right this guy uh, uh, out of the way right here, and I'm gonna bring it. I'm gonna snap it right there to that end. Okay, so let's take a look at this right here. So I selected that end and snapped it to this end of the. So I selected the end of the polyhedron to snap it into the end of the polygon. Okay, now I'm going to type uh, rotate. Enter, right, select that object right there, right click to enter. Now, rotation. I pick the center of the rotation. This is the axis, okay? So I select the second point, which is that guy right there, and then I snap, right, to this other end. And let me remove center. Center is being annoying. There we go, right, end. Now, what have I done? The only thing that I have done is I uh, snapped, right, or aligned the vertice, vertice right here of the uh, tetrahedron, right, into the end, right, of this uh, polygon. After I have done that, I rotated it so that this edge right here, it's aligned with the edge of the polygon. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. Now. What should be the size of this polyhedron compared to the size of this polygon? Mm -hmm. uh, is it? It fits in a one inch circle, right? Now, but, but what I'm get, trying to get though, right? I mean, the face of this tetrahedron, how does it compare to this polygon right here? Right, right now is it's, it's bigger right and how should it be the same size right? it should be the same size right that that tetrahedron should be actually able to sit right on top of that object right there okay so for that again i'd use scale now there's plenty of well a few scale options uh the first three you use a lot but in this case we're just going to use scale which scales objects in all of those three axes, okay? Length, width, and height versus, you know, scale in one direction. You'll see later on what it does and scale in two directions, okay? So that's for options, scale, okay? Select the object that you want to scale. That's the object that I want to scale. Press enter when done, right? I'm gonna right click to enter, okay? Base point, press enter for automatic. We do wanna select the base point, okay? So. I'm going to select, uh, in this case, right, the point where both the tetrahedron in this case and the polygon meet, okay? So think about it as you're, you're holding, um, you know, there's a, there's a nail, you know, somewhere on the wall and, you know, you get stuck to it. Your sweater gets stuck to it, right? That's the place from where you pull, right? So the sweater grows in the opposite direction of where the nail is, 
Okay. In this case, right, we actually want to e scale from that point, and you'll see right now how that works, right? So base point. So again, I pick that point right there. Now, scale factor or first reference point. I'm going to do this scaling by a reference, right? So my second reference point is going to be the edge, right, or the the edge of the tetrahedron that I want to change, right? So I click. Notice now that again my cursor has locked that distance. And now I'm going to snap right to the correct size. Let's see how that happened. All right, don't worry. I'm gonna go over it one more time. Actually, five more times. Okay, with all of these forms right here. Let's try the cube. Okay, so again, I place them on the distance right there so that I can see both where they're gonna go and where they currently sit. Okay, so I'm going to start with a move. All right, enter, all right, move that cube, right? Select objects to move, press enter when done. I am done, because that's the only thing that I'm gonna move. Right click, point to move from. I'm gonna move it from that uh, end to this other end, okay? So again, the first thing that you wanna do is find that point where they're gonna share that, uh, that origin, okay? So that's what I have done. What was next? Then rotate. Rotating it, right? Correct, Karina. Thank you, right? So rotate, enter, select the object, right? To rotate, press enter to when you're done. I'm done, so I'm going to right click. Center of rotation, right? This is your axis, remember. So in this case, again, is that point that they share, right? So, right, and then angle or first reference point, right? So notice that there's a circle right here, right there. I'm going to snap to that end. Right. I'm going to turn off ortho, right? so you guys can see now. I can actually pick any point right here. Right. I can just rotate. Look how I completed that circle. But I'm actually going to snap to this end right there. Right. So, so that's why your snap is so important. So I click. Okay. So now they are aligned. Right. Now what do I have to do? Scale it. Scale it down. Okay. So I type scale, enter. All right, select the object that I want to scale, right click, base point. Again, is that if I pick this point right here, look, if I pick that point on this main point, base point, and this is my, my reference, it scales it, right? But since I'm scaling with the reference, well, I, I cannot uh, use that reference, right? Because they're not sharing that, that end, okay? So that's what actually that first point is important, okay? So I undo that, type scale, enter. Select the object, right click, right, that point right there. Second point, that point right there. So again, it becomes sort of an automatic process, right? And you're basically, in essence, what you're doing is telling, right now, there's this distance right now, and I'll tell you what it is, from this point to this point, that I need it to be this much, right? So that's, this is called scaling with a reference. Right? If you see, we didn't add numbers, we didn't type numbers, we're just doing it with the reference of such points. Okay, so I'll move on. So type move, enter, snap from that end right there, bring that right here. And you'll see how now it's kind of a half of it is on the, on the below ground, half of it is above ground, or a construction plane, what's called. Uh, that's okay. All right, so again, uh, I have moved it, rotate. Enter, select the object, enter, uh, center of rotation, click, reference point click. Now, this is interesting because in this case, actually, I have to scale it bigger, bigger right? But still, I first need to finish the rotation, right? And I can tell right here, right, it's like, oh, okay, so this edge right here, right, should go all the way over here, right? We do it the same way, right? So scale, enter, select the object, enter, Reference point, second reference point, final one, okay? Now, this is where things get interesting. This is where get things get interesting. Again, I type move, right, and I bring right, the pentag uh, the uh, dodecahedron right here in, the, in this case. Now, this is interesting in the sense of its orientation, okay? okay. Let's say on that end right there. And actually, now that I look at it, Right. Uh, don't be 
you know, confused, right? I mean, I still have this edge right here that I can use to align on this end right there. Right? So right now I'm actually looking underneath the object. Right, I'm gonna come up, back up. And this is where, again, that's why I had uh, sort of the, uh, you can use uh, ghosted or x-ray something else, right? Uh, or it could just be confusing, right? But you know, it depends, right? So very simple again. So I have aligned it, rotate, select, enter. And the good thing is that we only need to do this once, okay? From there, we can just copy our objects. I'm gonna align it right here. Again, this is a little bit smaller than what it should be. So I can type what command, scale, correct, right click. Again, keep track of that origin point, reference point, right? Final size, that should be that right there. One more, last but not least, icosahedron, right? Bring it right there from that point, let's say to this one right here. Um, this is another, good command to know right now I'm trying to rotate uh, and see this end right here kind of like look up on this object right here um, right now my rotation is center on this center right in the center of my screen right? it's not very helpful what I actually want to do is select the object or what I do right select the object right zoom selected right and now my center of rotation is on the object okay so it's a very handy command um, I didn't find out about it until very, very late. But uh, anyway, use it a lot. So last thing, let's rotate this guy. Uh -huh. Well, rotate uh, last on this step right here. Select that right there, rotate, bring it right there, and then scale it, okay? So scale from there to there to there, okay? So all of them now are at the right size, okay? Now, what do I need to do in order for them to, you know, huh? rotate them again? Okay, how? Huh? Gumbo, okay. Can I? Okay, align with our, our vertices. I think you would rotate from the point where the the shape of the line so the base kind of like falls back on the rest of the shape. This one right here, right? Yeah, yeah that is kind of it. And of course, there's always more than one than right or way of doing things right here. I want to talk about uh, Fernanda's suggestion right there, which, you know, is one of the most, uh, you know, kind of uh, makes sense, right? I mean, to start using the gumball right here and, you know, start kind of like rotating like this. Uh, but all sorts of problems start happening. Right, number one, it just uh, you know the align right there, um, you know, and then you get that, you know, like start doing this, right? But however, it it does, it should, but later on, you know, and I'll talk more about this later on, or you hear about your construction planes, right? And the problem here, the cube is not a problem. That one we can align it to the uh, Cartesian. Uh, coordinates right here but in this case we have these angles right here which are the innate nature of the tetrahedron right so i was trying to kind of do what the fernanda uh, suggested i'm just going to move it right here so you can see right and you got to be careful right you got to be careful because okay so yeah i can rotate it with the gumball but more likely than not i can guarantee you like 90 percent of 90 percent you won't be able to get it 100 percent correct and that's the problem with gumball, right? Gumball is not accurate enough, okay? So I'm gonna undo. So yes, gumball is great, but again, each tool is great, right? but for its own purposes. That's this command right, that I wanted to show you guys. It's called orient three points. And it's kind of what uh, Bernie was talking about in, in terms of aligning, right? So orient three points, it actually asks you for three points, as the name suggests, right? The idea, though, is that it's going to match three points on one object to match three points on the other one. Okay, so check it out. So orient three point, right? Select objects to orient. That's the object that I want to orient, okay? So I'm gonna have reference point one. I'm gonna have three first reference points, okay? And the order matters, the sequence matters at least as you work the command, right? So reference point one, 
two, three. Okay. Now it's asking me for target point one, two, and three. Right. So do one, two, and three. Right. Mm -hmm. Of course, using snap. Now cube is not a problem. Right. The cube is not a problem. Right. Because that one I can rotate just with a simple rotation. Right? I can rotate it from there to there. It doesn't have any crazy angles, right? It just have 90 degree angles and it's sitting perfectly on it, okay? Now, this guy, for example, right? So this one I would do orient three point as well, right? Enter, select objects to orient, that would be it. So again, one, two, three, right? So one, two, three. And it sits perfectly on that. Now, this is called orient, how many points? Three points. Three points. So, right, do with the, correct, right? I mean, and, and that's the idea that just because it's called orient three points and actually have a form that has five points, it right, doesn't mean that I cannot use it, right? I can, right? Right click to repeat that command, select objects to orient, enter. And again, I can select one, two, and three. Right, and again, I go one, and this is where I had my, let's say, wireframe on, two and three. C, uh, yes, Bernie. So, to do the report, do you have to scale it first and then move it? You don't, yes. So, like, if we do the three point and the shape is bigger, it'll scale it down? No, it won't, actually. No, yeah, that's a really good question. Yes. I mean, I would so that I can see what's going on. That, that's actually a really good question. And um, I guess, you know, I mean, I can maybe prove it right here. So let's say that I do a scale, right? Let's say that I scale this guy from that point, you know, three times bigger, okay? So of course that's not gonna fall within that, but actually I can use orient, right? Three point, right? Enter, All right? So again, one, two and three it's just that it's kind of it can be kind of hard to see right one two and three right? and it orients it right. it will do it but it won't scale it but then now i can come in here and type scale right uh, uh select object you know scale from there to there okay so so it works now, why is it, uh, just a question aside, why is it orient three point, right? Why, why, why is it that I can use the three point to orient any polygon of X number of faces, 10, 20, 15, right? Well, the three point, right? A three point basically is what kind of polygon? It's a triangle, right? Think about it. What's the what's a polygon with the fewest? What's the polygon that has the fewest number of sides? Mm -hmm. It's a triangle, right? That means that I cannot have a flat surface that only has two sides. By definition, a polygon has, has to have at least three sides. So that's why it's just a triangle. How you use that triangle, it's up to you. Okay. Later on, we we, we work with more um, let's say intricate forms. Uh, and, and and I'll show you guys right now how, how we're gonna use keep using it right in order to stack your forms. Okay, so I'll just do the the next one, orient three point. So select that guy right there. Enter from there to there to there. Orient it to there, there, there. Okay, so real quick, change layers. Right, uh, change object layer, right, change object layer right there, or I can do it from right here. Right. So let's change that guy right there, that guy, and that guy right there. Okay, so that's what we have so far. Okay, now that's uh, that's our basic forms, right? Those are the ones that we have. Now, let's talk about maybe our base. Right? For In this case, right, we're gonna work somewhere in between between your, the little study that you did of the surface, which was one, uh, 12 inches in diameter. Study model was 24 inches in the diameter, 
we're going to work half of that, right? We are in be somewhere in the middle of that, which now we're going to have a polygon, base polygon of a nine inches radius, okay? So what does that mean? We're going to build our base, okay? So I'm, I'm going to my base layer right here. Um, type, um, pot, well, let me do a circle, right? I'll snap again uh, to the grid. Uh, I do a radius of nine inches. All right, bring that out. Oops. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we'll talk more about that, but at least for right now, the, the, the model. Okay, so again, just uh, bear with me right here. Let's say that I'm doing a poly, uh, not a polyhedron, but a polygon, right? Let's say, you know, just for fun, I'll do a six-sided one since I'm, I'm, I haven't been working with hexagon. Center, I'm going to turn back on center, come back in here, and that's right there, okay? So it's going to be now my base. Okay. Huh? Size of the circle, the radius is nine. Okay. All right, guys. So, how do I turn this hexagon into a hexagonal uh, prism, meaning that uh, it's a solid hexagon with a height? Thank you, Julia. Right there. So, we can type extrude, right? CRB, right? That would be this right here. So, I have that. What's the height of this? Solid, yes, thank you, Brian. That's a really good question, yes. So, or a really good point, right? So, whenever you're extruding, right, surfaces, make sure that, well, you may sometimes want it to be off, but for the most part, and for us, there's this, uh, or just be aware that there's this option solid, yes, or solid, no. Right? And again, if I zoom out enough, right, you see solid, no, and it's open. Yes, all right? So I'm going to do that, right click, extrude, right click, and I say yes, now I, it has, and that's actually on both ends, okay? It, it's solid, right, which, you know, I, I call it a lid, right, it has a lid, right, it's at the top and the bottom, okay? So yes, this should be, thanks Ryan, good point, 1.25, enter. This is the height of my base. Mm -hmm. 1.25, one and a quarter. Mm -hmm. 1.25. Okay. I'm going to move all right, right now the base right here a little bit underneath it so I can see this. I'm going to send that circle into a construction line. Let's say that one right there. And so... I'm gonna, oops, not the construction. Like for example, if I click on this edge right here, right, there's both. There's two things. There's a curve and there's an extrusion. Let me select the curve so that I can send this to a construction line, and I can do that right there. Okay. All right, guys. So um, let's do this. You guys remember, right? Just watch me for right now. So I'm gonna copy. I'm going to copy one of these uh, forms right here, right, which is a triangle. And I'm going to bring this guy right there. I'm going to rotate, right, rotate this guy from there to there, right? Uh, why am I doing this? So that it aligns, right, with that edge right there. Right, so I get that right there. Okay. Now, um, let me see. Can I get a midpoint from a polygon? I can. Okay, so I'm going to move that polygon right there from that center to the center of this triangle. You guys remember this? Mm -hmm. Right? Kind of, right? Which, uh huh. Now I'm going to do the grid. But remember this side, and, and here maybe I can show you guys right here. Right? And both of this, right? we're working on this, right? And again, this is the beauty of working on it digitally. Right? I mean, I can make as many copies and it's not as time consuming as, you know, building or drawing all of these different options. Now, remember, when you were trying to draw, and yes, we're going to draw the grid, 
right? But remember, guys, that how we started this, right? Because, you know, as we were working on that exercise, right? I'm going to copy this one more time over here, right? Rather than centering the, the triangle, what did we actually center? Kind of. But I right, remember that we actually, uh, excuse me, no, 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 actually, uh, the hexagon, right? We need another hexagon. Okay, so there's this other, com there's a rotate command, right? Select this object to rotate. Now check this out. There's an option that tells me that I can rotate and make a copy at the same time. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna turn that on. All right. So I wanna rotate from there to there, and I do that, 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 and that. Right there. Right click, and I exit. Oh snaps! All right. So I'm gonna delete that. Select that. Type move. Enter. Bring that there, and bring that there. Okay. Now this is not quite right because it needs to be like that. So I just hold it shift and with gumball. Uh, we're one of our favorite friends right here. Right. You know, rotate this right here. Right. But you have to hold shift so that it's aligning. Okay. Good so far? All right. So, let's talk about now uh, how to populate this thing right here. Now, I'm going to lock, right, the base so that it's not moving. And so I'm gonna make this layer current right there. Lock this guy right here. Um, that's it, okay? And from there, have some fun right here. Select those objects to copy. Right, do that and let me turn off grid snap so that it doesn't snap to the grid and from there I can start creating this right here All right I can start drawing this right here All right do that right there so I like the response Right, because again, the uh, part of the effort of this exercise is that you guys can appreciate, you know, the amount of effort that or the amount of work that you can save, you know, just by you know, digitally versus hand. You guys had to do all of this by hand. Okay. Now there's faster ways of doing this, for sure. Yeah. But the idea is that we can populate this thing right here with the. Uh, the grid. Now I could do it that way, all right? So I can let's see if maybe can I make this easier. All right? We're always trying to find easier way of doing things. Let's call it efficiency versus just being lazy, right? Um, let me copy this right here. Let's make another copy, all right? Ah, I do need my base though. And so I'm gonna lock it. Copy. Enter. When the when you lock the base or when you lock anything, uh, the idea is that you cannot move it. Okay. Yes. So let's see. Can I go back to that center can you one? Hide? You can. You can. It can be locked and it can be hide it like that. All right. Mm -hmm. So all right. So actually, let me show you guys. Did I? Cannot find the center of this. Okay, here we go. Okay, let me show you guys something else as well. Right, because I can do that. I can start copying all those little triangles, right? But I'm going to show you guys an easier way of, of doing this. Right? So find that, select that center, and right? bring that right there to that center. Uh, let's see. And as a matter of fact, I only need one of them. See, and that's what you want to uh, avoid, that they start overlapping like that. So I'm going to explode this, enter. So these are all separate line segments, okay? Now, um, I'm going to turn off, actually, uh, Fernanda, the, the base. Let me show you guys something. And then maybe even, like, let me create a new layer so you guys see what's going on right here. So I'm call this a uh, grid. 
make it green. Now let's select some orange color right there. Let's change that to grid. Okay. Because I'm gonna type extent, enter, select this object as my boundary, enter, and pick all of these lines as such. Right? And, and bring that right there. Okay. So I can now type copy, enter. And I'm going to turn off grid snap. I'm going to turn on intersect. Right, and I can bring that right there. Okay, so I can bring this, copy this, copy it to there. I remember that I, uh, I was walking around. It's like, guys, well, you don't have to trace this little triangle right there. What if you just project the lines all the way, uh, all throughout? Okay, so we can start doing that right, with this lines right here. Just start doing that right there. I right, can select this one, copy it right there. Right now, as you start, you know, getting more lines, you can become much more effective on this. Right, so copy from there to there. As you start getting this, um, sort of this this grid, I can start copying this right from there to there to there to there, right there. And all of a sudden, the grid starts appearing. Right, so you know you you can decide which one works better for you. And of course, you know at the end, I do have to go trim. Right, enter, select cutting objects. That would be the boundary lines right here. Enter, and then delete that, delete that, delete, 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 delete. delete. All right, so that's trim. Right, in order to trim those lines that are kind of going out. Now, in this case, for example, what command could I use so that actually I can make these lines meet the outer line? Extent. Extent. Right, so if I type extent, enter, now select the boundary line again, right? I can click on all these lines, right? And they meet that point right there. And I think those were the, the only ones. Okay, there probably probably I could use radial polar ray as well to create this grid, or I could use a number of them, of uh, different options. Okay, right? but uh, you know, for right now, you know, I'll use that. And and again, once you start, you know, seeing right how the grid's happening, right, it becomes easier. Right, you start it, it starts kind of making it. It just happens by itself, kind of. Right. For example, I can copy those guys right there from there to maybe there, right? And then like that. And then maybe copying these lines right there from there to, let's say, um, there. And then the same from there to, let's say, there. Okay, and then maybe some of these ones right here. Or shift to add to the selection right there from there to let's say there and you know, that line from there to there right there and again it's just a matter of cleaning up a little bit trim this is where again I can turn off that that layer right there so it's not on the way that's my trimming object right there I can trim as such So just give me a second, just clean this up a little bit. And again, extend, enter, select my boundary object right there. I can project all of those lines right there um, where they should uh, meet right there on the on the end. Okay. And once you start getting that the hang of this, right? I mean, okay, so copy, you know, extend, trim, you know, it becomes uh, faster, of course. Uh, Right there. Okay, so I won't, won't go through the, the entire grid. And of course, talking about grids, so there's starting to be an overlap of grids, right? The, the grid that I'm drawing right here with my grid layer and the grid from Rhino. Okay, so yeah, let's turn it off. If I just type grid, enter. Uh, there's all sorts of options right here, but uh, one of them is show grid. It's set to yes. I can turn it off and it has that. Okay, so I'm going to File, Save. Uh, very important. Make sure that you do. A, in this case, I'll do a file, 
save as right? p2 midterm i called it a lap since you know we're in we're in class right here right now okay guys so almost there all right, so so that's the that's the idea. Now, why why am I drawing this? Well, remember we kind of need those objects, right? In this case, this guy's right here, so that I can now, right? I can type copy, enter, and start bringing right some of my surfaces over here, right? and I can start placing them over here. I can type rotate and bring that over here. Rotate. Right, and I can type copy, enter, enter, right, and remember that you guys were, were using this, right, and kind of like placing them however you, you kind of, uh, you know, want it, right, or your design. So remember, I can type rotate, rotate from there to there to there, and it gives me kind of that, that surface right there. I can also use mirror right here. Right to mirror one two three objects from there to there right. you can select those right there copy enter and you know, whoops just be careful when you snap to those for example that one's off so i'm gonna do in copy and bring that out right there you know let me just build something uh you know, maybe for right now do that okay and again you can start seeing it from different points okay all right Karina almost there girl You're almost there all right <laughs> um, so then I have I have a surface I have a base right I have lines which are the grid right there I have now uh, the surfaces which are the smaller ones and again you know I mean oops Idea was that happens when you right my my cursor right now is on these tabs right here and you just scroll in and out right I'm going through these tabs right here which are basically all of your views right here okay um, the last or one of the last things that uh, we're doing right here what are we adding on top here the shapes right the polyhedrons. All right, so if I type copy, all right, I can start bringing these guys right here, right from there to let's say you know maybe there. Okay. Now again, the idea was that these were aligned, right? So I can then rotate, all right? Enter, rotate from there to there. Now careful with that because right? there's like a guy right there. No, all right, guys. This is where things get interesting as well. So I'm gonna type copy, right? Because this is where again doing it by hand, it's very easy, right? I mean, I can just glue them, right? But again, how can I make this face align with this one? The the three point thing, yeah. I'll I'll take that, right? Orient three point, right? So let's say I want to orient this guy rather. Enter. So you get one, two, three, one, two, three. Right. So now that's flat. I want to copy, right? That guy from there to there. Right. Now I can do orient three point one, two. Three, one, two, three, and they start. Huh? <laughs> Copy paste. <laughs> right. Sure. Let's start doing that right there. No, guys. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. As you start getting your reforms, as such. All right, guys. Questions? Okay, I'm going 
fast because I mean again remember the idea is that all of this is being recorded right here right now all right okay so no everything clear mm -hmm. yeah okay mm -hmm. yes uh, for right now just use the ones that I uh, gave you guys uh, let's, that let, let's worry about first modeling the playground the model itself and uh, then that's just the um, that's just the sherry on top. And when is this? This is due Monday. Yes, well, let's um, let's maybe refer back to the blackboard for that. I don't want to you know, give you a wrong date, but yes, so we'll check right now on the dates for that. But in terms of this assignment right here, the modeling part, um, but I do need to show you guys, right, I mean, how to start bringing uh, uh, drawings out of here. But, you know, that, that's okay. We'll do. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, um, let's work on this. But uh, I do need you guys to start working on this, right? I mean, you know, I need you guys to start running into problems and questions so that Friday I can address those, especially since Friday we're here very early, I mean, very short period of time. But again, I guess, you know, it's it's a the idea that, you know, I mean, let's, let's say this. For Friday, I do want to see your base with the grid to begin with, right, digitally. Um, and I want to see all of your polyhedrons build up and your polygonal surfaces, okay? And I want to see that, to a certain extent, you have already started stacking some of your polyhedrons and surfaces, okay? I'll say that. Yes? Um, would it be more convenient to realize once you get our polyhedrons to, like, copy them? Or is there a specific way you can, like, copy them? We need 760, right? In total? Yes. But is there any way that we can, like, grab one and then copy it 25 times? Yeah. Times? And so yeah. just, like, doing it. Yeah, no, I'm actually glad that you asked. Let's do this. Um, that's, a, that's a great question. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, there's many. I mean, just like Fernanda said, you could just copy paste. Yeah, that's true. Uh, however, right, there is a copy paste. It's called array. All right, so let me see if I type copy. Let's see if let's see if this will work because that's actually a really good question. All right, so it's, I'm gonna just copy them over here, kind of like when you when you build them, right? I mean, physically you have like these rows of just boom, 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 and they would just put them together, right? Mm -hmm. So okay, I can let's see. There's this command called array, array, and let's just try array, basic array right here. Select objects to array right here. Right click number in x direction let's lift that in one right now numbers in the y direction how many of each did we need it 25 did we yeah. yes 25 yeah. of each yeah. oh. no oh. <laughs> no i mean i'm not a not a not a monster <laughs> Ah, you want to do 25? Okay. It's not a problem, right? Just send more. There's 50 more in, right? 15, right? So, num All right, so let's do that. Number in Y direction, let's do 15. All right? Number in Z direction, 1. Now, let's see. If I click there, there we go. Oh, nice. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so there we go. No, well, they're already. <laughs> well, that's kind of what I'm saying, right? I mean, everything makes sense here, but then you start it on your own, and, and you're like, wait, how do I turn on my computer? 
Right. Well, I mean, it's because all of this is just practice, guys. You know, I mean, all of this is just uh, years and years of, of using this. So, I mean. I have a question, but it's, it's on the exercises that we did. Okay. Um, I didn't know how to do the 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 one that we did in the book. Okay. Well, those are here. Those are submitted already. So. Oh no, no, but I just wanted to know how to do it. Oh, uh, okay. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you. No problem. Oh, wow. 116. All right, guys. Actually, before I pause this, one more thing. For those of you guys that are taking faces off, okay, um, Sergio and, you know, whatnot. Yes. So just one more thing, one more thing. If you actually go right here on, on this icon right here, it's called Extract Surface, and you can actually type it. Extract. Uh, you see there's a lot of things right here. That's why, but it's over here, Extract Surface. All right? All right, so I can click on that object right there, right click, and just delete it. All right. I, and I struck them like that. Okay? Yeah? <laughs> All right, in case you were still uh, uh, working on that. So, again, that was... Let me go back. All right. So, that was... Extract. Extract surface. All right? Select surfaces to extract. You click on the face that you want to... Let's think about it this way. A move out, all right, and delete. All right, select surfaces to extract. Press enter when done. Right, right click to enter. Now it's there, right? And I can just use the gumball to just move it out. But in this case, I just selected it and delete it. Guys, that's it. It's just a bunch of lines. It's just a bunch of polyhedrons. Easy, so easy. So what we're doing. When we're doing the drawings, uh, do you want specifically like a top view section mm. and or or five? Let's uh let's work on the model and then we'll talk about drawings. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, is that gonna be after? Yes. Oh okay. I thought yes. it was like all on Monday. I was like. Yes. Uh, when I was gonna like the the school model. Like, all right. So let's. Yes, so we'll, we'll talk about it. So I'm, I'm going to pause this. Any questions on the model, on the 3D modeling? No. No. Okay. All right, so let me...